we start with uh, measurable functions. And um, what is a measurable function? Or why is measurable important? Let's write the definition first. So a function f, which is mapping from some space to some other space. So some set s into some set s prime. They may be the same set or they may be a different set. We say that this um, function is um, measurable in Finnish, mitallinen. And more precisely, we say that it's measurable with respect to sigma algebras S and S prime. So we might write it this way if we want to be precise. And the condition is if the pre-image by F of every set here B, if this is true for all B being a set in S prime, calligraphic S prime. And um, this is how we define what a measurable function means. To make sense of this, we need to uh, understand what this pre-image means. So that's what we call pre-image. And how does the pre-image look? So if we sketch a function, and assume that here we have a set S and here we have a set S prime, and here we have some set uh, B in the target space, and then we ask, okay, what's the pre-image F minus one B? So this is a set in, in space S. And let's recall that, um, pre-image f minus b, we use this notation to mean a set of points. Let's call it, um, let's call it, um, let's not use x, but let's use s, little s. So the set of points such that uh, f maps that point into set b. This is the definition of measurability. Why is this so important? Because we remember maybe a little bit from last week that um, measurable sets. So let's clarify. Let's recall what is a measurable set. So they are um, members of a sigma algebra. So these are sigma algebras. And these sigma algebras are those structures, the collection of sets where we can assign probabilities and measures. So when we start to work, we know now that these uh, sigma algebras play well because they are stable under complement and uh, finite union and countably infinite union. So they are, and then they are also um, stable under finite and countable, uh, countably infinite intersection. So they are stable kind of under the rules that we commonly use for logic. The set structures behave well when they are sigma algebras, but then we, when we start to work with random variables, we have uh, going to play with functions which map this there and that there and so on. So for such mappings, we need to be sure that um, the measurable sets, the elements of the sigma algebra, they will uh, remember members of sigma algebra. And um, maybe the one strange thing is that um, we are not going to look mapping sets forward with functions. So we could think, okay, what's the image of a measurable set by a function? But actually the essential thing is to go backward. So when F is here, we start from B here and then we go backward. So we map a B backward by taking a pre-image. This is a little bit similar as in topology. Maybe you might recall that the continuous function is a map which maps an open set 
that the pre-image of an open set is again an open set. So this is very similar. The pre-image of a measurable set B here should be a measurable set here in this space. And that's what measurability means. And uh, we need to learn a little bit about this concept so that we can be sure that we can work with measures and probabilities also with functions. And that's what we, it's going to be random variables we'll soon learn. Let's have a look at an example. Let's do um, one example here. Assume that um, now let's take uh, as the sigma algebra on the starting space. Let's take the power set. So in that case, our sigma algebra here is the set of um, collection of all subset of uh, subsets of S. Then, um, then what happens? Well, then actually every function is measurable. And now note that um, <clears throat> instead of writing uh, S and S prime, I actually um, ignore this. So that's what we usually do. So we usually don't, let me just put the crosses. We usually don't write this when we are sure from the context uh, what sigma algebras we mean. And usually we are sure of the context. So when the context makes it clear, we deal with only one sigma algebra. We just, just say that the function is measurable. Okay. So the first example here, what does it say? If we take the power set, let's recall, this is the power set. If we take the power set to be the sigma algebra here, so let's look at the pre-image of some set, pick your favorite set B here, and let's look at the pre-image. So it is some set there. Well, then, because any set is a member of the power set, we know that this pre-image um, belongs to calligraphic S. And that's why um, this is a trivial example. If we could always work with power sets, so everything would be measurable, and that would be it. Let's do another very simple example. Usually we don't work with power sets, but something else. Let's look at um, another very simple example. Assume that uh, we have a function which is um, a constant. So let's assume that f uh, of s is equal to c for all s. Then, um, then what? So f is a constant function. Then what? Then um, what can we say about the pre-images of a constant function? Let's look. So let's look at the pre-image for some set B. What can we say about B? What is this pre-image? Can we calculate it in some simple form? Let's look. So it's the set of points S for which the F of S belongs to B. In this case, it's the set of S such that the constant is in B. So um, what is this set actually? It's a collection of points such that the constant is in B. So this might look puzzling at first, but if you look at it a bit, so there are actually only two alternatives. Either this condition is true if C is a member of B, then, so we, we assume that, okay, we have a point C here in this space. If C is not in B, so then uh, this can never be true. So actually we have two cases. This is empty if uh, C is not in B. And 
in the other case, it's the full set. So this is the full set if um, C is a member of B. I hope this makes sense to you. Think about this carefully. The points for which this condition is true. Well, if the condition is true, then every point is uh, satisfies that condition. If this condition fails, then no matter what point you choose, the condition fails still. So you get the empty set. It's not the condition is not valid for any point, little s. <laughs> so we see that this pre-image could be either the empty set or the full set, nothing else. On the other hand, we know that the empty set and the full set, they are members. We know that uh, the empty set and the full set uh, belong to this um, calligraphic S because this is a sigma algebra. So actually, what can we conclude? We only have two choices. So in any of these cases, uh, regardless, so this pre-image is always a member of S. So our conclusion is that um, no matter what set we take, the pre-image is, is, is always in this um, sigma algebra. So we conclude that um, F is measurable. Okay, are there questions? Maybe if you like to ask. We kind of made two rather trivial conclusions. We found that uh, if we take the power set, then all functions are measurable. The other example, if we look at the constant function, so constant function is always measurable, no matter what sigma algebras we are looking.